Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to the Great Poker Chip Adventure. Today we're discussing the Poker Night Poker Chips. Let's see how they look in a game. Go ahead and if you're at home, pause the video quick, run and grab two cards off of your deck and let's see how you do. We are going to uh, do a little Texas Hold'em here. I'm not sure if all of these are going to fit on screen here. Doesn't look too exciting yet. We'll see what happens here. Still not too exciting. Wow, that's interesting. All right, well, these cards are up for review. The Hoyle cards. Maybe I mispronounced that. Maybe they're Olay. Who knows how to pronounce those? Either way, these are up for review. As you can see, as advertised, waterproof, clear, and durable. Well, we'll see about all of those things. But that's for another video. How did the Poker Night chips do? Did they hold their own? Were they overly distracting? Did uh, Does it look like something that you would want to see regularly? Let's go ahead and roll the rest of these in. I'm in my workshop today just because, and it happens to be really windy here in Ohio. And you're going to hear some leaves blowing around probably. I'm in my shop, okay? It's not like I'm in my basement and there are leaves blowing around. <laughs> kind of a funny thought, but that's unfortunately not the case. And I am missing some. Let me run and grab the fives really quick. Oh, no, they're right here. Ah, I got them. Ha. Ah. All right. All right, so these are what I consider middle-class chips, meaning that you get a set of 300 for around $50. And there are a lot of sets that are in this category. So this is not just a review of the Poker Nights. This kind of represents a lot of the retailer-specific branded poker chips. Now, this isn't exclusively one retailer. I've seen several retailers carry these chips. So, I mean, take it for what it's worth. Just be advised that many of the chips that are in this price category that look like these that are plastic with a metal insert that weigh 13 and a half grams will have many of the same traits and problems that these have. All right, now let's jump into it. For starters, these are, like I said, 13 and a half gram chips, 40 millimeter, sold as clay composite, and I took a whole bunch of measurements. It came out pretty accurate, slightly over 13 and a half grams, but so close doesn't really matter. 40 millimeters is correct. And the thickness I had no issues with. If you guys remember my Milano poker chip review, there was a thickness difference across denominations. All right. That was not the case with the poker night. So quality control so far is looking really good. But unfortunately, as I plowed through these chips, I did find some where the inlays were not centered. And that causes all sorts of problems, especially with the flatness of the chips. And you can see right through those chips, they are definitely not flat. But again, that's average for the segment. Compared to something that's really high end, that's really flat, for example, Paulson's. I mean, Paulson's are just rock solid when it comes to flatness and quality control. So obviously, I'm not going to compare these two. I'm comparing these two other chips in their segment. I don't know. Pick one. Monte Carlo poker chips. All right, here we go. You can see tons of gaps in between those. It just rocks back and forth. These chips are not flat. All right. So the inlays aren't perfect. The flatness isn't perfect. The flatness spinner discussion, <laughs> they're not perfect when it comes to quality control. All right, so what about the rest of it? The edge marks obviously mimic the clay chips and they are I haven't had any problems with them I haven't had any edge marks missing outright missing no inlays missing and one of the reasons why I discuss quality control and one important aspect of quality control I should address quality control is important when you're talking about the overall picture of a chip obviously this is not jewelry every chip I don't expect to be perfect however if there is something that's overly, overly distracting I will bring it to your attention because it comes to my attention. So for example, playing with these, this comes to quality control, playing with these, the first thing I notice when I pick these up, and it's noticeable, are these sharp edges. I'm not sure if it'll show up, but there are just sharp edges from the molding process on these chips. And it's common across 
I'm talking about this edge right here. It's just sharp and it sticks out. And so playing with these, I just constantly am feeling those sharp edges. It feels like there's a top and a bottom. The top is smooth and then the bottom is this sharp edge, which turns me off to these chips and many other chips in this segment. Other chips that have the same problem, like, like I said, this represents a lot of these plastic chips. The only ones I found in the segment that don't have that problem at all are the next gens, okay? The next gens are just really smooth edged. I don't have a problem with the way these feel. They're not distracting. They're the only ones that are in that price range. Now, there's one that's pretty close with these coin inlays. The coin inlays kind of have a ridge, but it's not a sharp ridge. All right, so par for the course, you know, it's average. Very middle of the road for quality control. Now let's talk about design. The design leaves something to be desired. Let's hold one of these up again to the, for, to the camera so you can just have a close look at some of these while I talk. They obviously mimic the compression molded clay chips such as the Paulsons, all right? And you can see they stamped in the little sword through spade right here, like top hat and cane, except it's a spade with a sword through it. The glossy inlay, I know it's a sticker, but for consistency, I'm gonna call them an inlay. The inlay denomination matches the edge marks. You can see that across these chips here. So they are pretty consistent with their design. And let me get the five here for you so you can see that. Again, you notice the blue five, the blue edge marks. Now these colors are very reserved, uh, kind of as a comparison, let's see if we can get this all on camera here. Kind of as a comparison, let's roll in some 25s from other manufacturers here, uh, just as a reference. Uh, what else am I missing? I don't know. There's a million of them here, whatever. Okay, <laughs> look at this green. Um, my friends described this as like a Christmas green or a military green. And at first I was kind of like, yeah, that is kind of a dark green, but then I was comparing it to other, like even Top Hat and Cane. Well, that's a pretty dark, deep green, isn't it? Huh, all right, maybe so it's not that dark, you know? Tiki, next gen. But then you get into some of these really bright ones, like the Clay Smith Desert Heat, Milano, Monte Carlo. I mean, you kind of have to pick the colorations that you like. Another kind of disappointment with the Poker Nights, for me, was the kind of drab color combinations they chose. Like, look at the hundreds. It's like this really beige and boring color edge marks, you know? Uh, but I might be spoiled because, like my dad said here, let's pull some of these out. You get these Paulson classics, and you're talking about bright, vivid colors. Obviously, you can see where their inspiration came from on some of these designs here. But, you know, it's like, it's night and day difference when you're talking about edge marks and vivid, exciting chips. So that said, design, for me, I mean, this is purely opinion. It leaves something to be desired, but the design is very average across the board when you're talking about other chip designs in this price range. So we can't compare it to Paul since we're comparing them to other chips, average. But what you have to ask yourself right now is, are you happy with this design? I am not. I don't like it. It's too middle of the road again. It's too boring. It's, but, oh, that said, it's interesting point. This set is in all of my friends' top three, and well, some of them top five. It's just a happy set, not a happy set, it's just a mediocre set. It's People aren't like, oh, I hate that set. There are some sets that they love, some sets that they hate, and then this one's always middle of the road. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, this, these aren't bad. We can play with these, and we do frequently. So, Poker Nights design, uh, well, let's say average just to give it the benefit of the doubt. And that brings us squarely to materials, plastic, metal insert. <laughs> what else do I have to say? Uh, what does that imply? All right, well, well, first off, it really represents the type, okay? Like the Monte Carlo poker chips I reviewed, plastic metal insert. Uh, let's see what else I have. The Clay Smith, Desert Heat, plastic metal insert. It's just what you're going to find. Like I, get, like I said, again, the only exceptions are what the next gens, let's roll in a stack of them, next gens are kind of the exception, no metal insert in these. And the coin inlays, obviously, there is kind of a metal insert, but it's the decoration and the denomination there. So, yes, most of the chips in this price range will be made of the same materials, average, 
And that brings us to durability and wear. These wear pretty well. You can see we've had some extensive wear put on these chips. Now this is from not infants, not toddlers, but children, nine, 10 years old, who have put some significant wear on these chips, sliding them around the floor, throwing them around. Maybe later on, I don't know, well, one of these you can see there's like, you know, all kinds of damage to these chips. They wear pretty well. They'll last you probably your whole life. I mean, even with little dings like this, they're still gonna last. Look at this scratch right here. Pretty intense. <laughs> uh, tr yeah, trial uh, trials that we put these through. So they're durable. They're going to wear really well. And if you've watched my other videos, you've seen me on camera break chips before. Here I have them right here. You can go back and watch them. Next Gen broke that on camera. The Desert Palms broke while I was throwing some chips around on camera. And the Milano's broke. I don't have the broken Milano, but the Milano's representing, this isn't the broken one, but representing the Milano's. The Milano's broke too. I just grabbed, I grabbed a chip and I literally just snapped it, okay? So durability with a steel insert plastic chip or ABS chip, yes, I mean, it's very durable. They're very durable. And like I said, you can let people terrorize with those. Obviously you don't let kids chew on these, possible choking hazard. And something else I should address. I address this just to be consistent. Lead content, I'm not worried about that in these. Even if the pigment does have some lead in it, it the plastic is so durable, you're not going to get powder in your felt or in any sort of dangerous way. I'm not terribly concerned about it unless it was really, really, really high content lead. And if the material were really soft, like Paulson's or Milano's, where you get that chalky residue all over everything, then I'd be a little bit more concerned about it. But more importantly, other BPA or other products that may be in here, please don't let your toddlers chew on these. Choking hazard. Um, this, if, if the inlay, I haven't had any of these inlays come out, speaking of quality control and durability, the inlays are in there glued, even the ones that are offset, they're glued in really well. So I haven't had any problems with those coming out. So yeah, don't let kids chew on these. Choking hazard. Uh, plus they're going to damage your chips. Just keep, you know, practice some common sense with poker chips. Now, durability and wear, I'm going to say average because, you know, compared to all these other metal insert ones, yeah, compared to next gen, they might be a little bit better. Oh, here's one with the inlay slightly off. You can see the inlay is just not centered. Can you see that huge gap on the right there? The chip has this recessed portion where that inlay, that sticker is supposed to lie and it doesn't they, they missed their mark, but it's glued in or something. There's some glue there that prevents me from peeling that out. So pretty durable little chips there. All right, now let's talk about my feelings about these chips. Do I, you already know, do I like these chips? No, they're too bleh, they're too middle of the road. I want love, hate. I want to love the chip or hate the chip. These are just, too, I could care less. And that's how I feel about so many of these other chips that are in this price range. You go to Amazon or you go to some of these poker chip websites and you have these sets for $50. You can get all of these and they just change the inlay a little bit. Maybe, you know, with these like the spade, you know, sword and spade. And there's, this company has a variety of these. This isn't the only one. They have poker nights. They have several others. Read the description about where I got these and where I recommend you get these. It's just not my style. Talking purely about looks. I don't like, additionally, I don't like the sharp edges on any of these. So the Monte Carlos, the Desert Heat, any of these other chips in this price range that are plastic with the metal insert seem to have that same manufacturing flaw of just these really sharp, really sharp edges on their chips. Okay, I hate it. So I avoid these at all costs. I much prefer the next gens, but you, if you watch my review, these aren't perfect either. Anyway, so let's talk about comp competitive options. So let's say, like me, you're not really happy with the looks of these, but let's say you're not really happy with the feel of these sharp edges, so you want to move up a step, all right? The competitive options, I already showed you some. So what are you, what could you move up to? Well, let's start with what I call the upper middle class, all right? These are clay chips, China clay chips, generally, and I think I have another set here. Are these the, pulling them out of trays here. I think this is, yeah, okay. So Desert Palms, now there are a couple of Desert Palm sets. This is the 
clay set, there's actually a, a next gen set, which is made out of the same material as these next gens. And you can tell just by looking at the edge marks, which one's which. And again, read the description. I may include where to find these desert palms. Anyway, these are like the China clay version of the desert palms and the Milanos. You're going to be spending a little bit more than twice as much for these chips as these chips, but you don't have those sharp edges. You have that nice chalky feel from like a casino chip. They're not too shabby overall. So, you know, if you like your casino clay chips, compression molded clay chips, these are affordable and they have a better feel in my opinion. All right. So that's what you could potentially move up to. Or if you wanted to spend a little bit more, you can move into ceramics. Let's uh, roll some ceramics into here. Uh, let's see. Scroll ceramics are an option. Now, ceramics are kind of interesting ball game. They're a hard plastic, so they sound more bright, and they're not going to be as heavy as these metal insert chips. Remember, weight isn't associated or correlated with value. So you move into some scroll chips. These are pretty affordable for some. You'll have to look online to see the prices. I don't have them memorized right off the top of my head. Nile Club are another option for ceramics. Nevada Jacks are really popular. These are a little bit more expensive. Review obviously pending. I'm still waiting for my set to show up. I ordered a set of these. Um, those are all options that you can move up You know the ranks. Obviously, if you want something really high end, you can move into a set of Paulsons. Like here's some Top Hat and Cane Paulsons. Now these are Paulsons. Now, wow, Paulsons are a great chip when you're talking about quality control in the manufacturing process. This is actually embedded in the chip. It's not just a sticker they stuck on there. Very well made, top hat and cane. However, these are $1.30 a chip, whereas these are 17 cents a chip. So you're talking about hundreds of dollars for a set of Paulsons. All right, that's kind of where you could go, depending on what you're looking for. And let's talk about some other things that don't influence my decision. So I, you know, if you like the looks of these, I can recommend these over anything else. So for example, looking at these two sets, should I get the Monte Carlo or the Poker Knights? If you like the Poker Knights, you like that reserved, I'm not gonna offend anybody, look, get the Poker Knights. All right, now let's talk about shuffling and sound. Two things I don't care about. Shuffling, I mean, any chip, you know, it doesn't matter on, you know, price doesn't seem to affect the ability to shuffle a chip, a chipset. I mean, even these these dice chips, ABS, metal insert, super easy to shuffle, super cheap. Done, you can shuffle them. All right, great. What about sound? All right, well, here's a sound comparison just because people care. I don't know what I'm gonna roll in. Okay, so Poker Knights, let's compare some of the competitive offerings here. Uh, let's see what else we have. And I want some of these desert heats. All right. Okay, so here is the sound of the Poker Knights. Monte Carlo. Desert heat. All kind of the same category. Metal, plastic. Now these sound different. These are way different. These are like 14 grams plus coin inlay chips. All right, well, there you go. Interesting sounds. Well, how do they sound compared to the upper middle class chips? Well, let's find out here. Milano China clay versus plastic metal insert. Oh, what about the low end chips, dice chips? Okay. What about some ceramics here? Yeah, I'm not gonna roll in all the ceramics. All right, what about high-end chips? Let's go back to our Paulsons. Well, I don't know if that helps anybody, but there you go. Ooh, next gen, I missed those. All right, that's kind of a comparison for sound, just to give you an idea. If any of those other chips sound interesting, I will at some point have a review on all of these that I rolled in front of the camera. 
So go ahead and watch those videos. All right, overall, I can recommend these if you like the looks. I'm not a fan of the looks or the sharp edges. And with anything in this price range, that is the 13 and a half gram metal insert plastic. You guys know the routine. It's going to have those sharp edges, this, you know, to date as of fall 2014. The Great Poker Chip Adventure. I do not like these. Just too boring for me. And I'm not a big fan of the segment of chip either. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps somebody out there. Leave a comment if you own these or if you have some opinions to share.